In this video, we're going to go over the relationship between sine and cosine of complementary angles. So um, what we're going to do in this slide is we have three different examples, and we are going to use our knowledge of our trig function. So remember, we have so ka toa. And what we're going to do is for each example, we're going to find the ratio for sine of A and the ratio for cosine of B. So remember, when we're trying to find the ratios for our trig functions, we want to label our reference angle. So first, I'm going to do the ratio of sine of A. Um, now remember, sine of A is opposite over hypotenuse. So I'm going to go ahead and label my sides first. This would be opposite. This would be hypotenuse. This would be adjacent. Um, so for my ratio of sine of A, that's going to be opposite over hypotenuse, which would be 16 over 20. Now in a different color, let's do the ratio of cosine of B. Now for cosine of B, now our reference angle is going to be different. This is going to be our reference angle in green, which means that our sides are going to be labeled slightly differently. So for B being our reference angle, our opposite side um, is going to be AC. Our hypotenuse is still going to remain AB though, because this is still the side that's across from the right angle. Um, but then this side here would be our adjacent side. Now the ratio of cosine of B, cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse. So the ratio of cosine of B is 16 over 20. Now let's do this for example two as well. So for example number two, um, we are first looking for sine of A, so we would label our reference angle. Um, so we have opposite, hypotenuse, and adjacent. And then sine would be opposite over hypotenuse. So sine of angle A for diagram number two is four over five. Now we want cosine of angle B, so here's our reference angle, let's relabel. So this side would then be opposite. This side would stay as the hypotenuse. This side would then be adjacent. So cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse. So the, the ratio of cosine of B is again 4 over 5. Now let's do this last one. This last one, we are doing sine of A. So we label our reference angle. Here we would have opposite hypotenuse and adjacent. Um, so sine of A would be 12 over 13. Um, and then for B, our reference angle is here. We would then have our opposite, adjacent, and hypotenuse sides. So cosine being adjacent over hypotenuse would again be 12 over 13. So what you should see here is that when we're doing the ratios of, of sine of A and cos of B, we get the same exact thing. Now, what you should realize here is that there's a special relationship. So it's not just, oh, sine of an angle is equal to cosine of an angle. No, we need to be very specific with what these angles are. So angles A and B, no matter what triangle we're looking at, angles A and B are complementary. So angle A and angle B are complementary. Now complementary is a fancy way of just saying, hey, we are adding to 90 degrees. So we're going to formalize this discovery. So in mathematical terms, the, this is the property that you're going to get. The property that you're going to get is that sine of an angle equals cosine of its complement. Remember, this is just a fancy way of writing the complement. So sine of one angle is equal to cosine of its complement. Now it also goes the other way. Cosine of an angle is going to be equal to the sine of the complement. Now, how can we utilize this? Well, what we're going to see is we might have equations given to us like sine of x equals cosine of y. Now, if we're given something like this, this is only true if x and y are complementary. Now, complementary is just a fancy way, again, of saying that they add to 90. So if you're looking for a variable in this case, again, this is only true if this angle plus this angle equal 90. Now, let's do some practice questions. So I'll keep that reminder up here for us as we're working through these questions. So again, here we go. Sine of 27 equals cosine of x. And we want the equation that we can use to solve for x. And then ultimately, we want to solve for it. So again, remember, sine of an angle equaling cosine of another angle. That is only true if the two reference angles, the two angles inside of here, they must be complementary. So if they're complementary, then I know that if I add them, 
I should get 90 degrees. Now, if you do algebra here, you should be able to subtract 27 from 90, so 90 minus 27, and that will give you a value of 63 degrees. Second one, cos of 55 equals sine of x. Again, in order for this to be true, these two angles must add to 90 degrees. Then if you do algebra to solve for that, you get 90 minus 55. So we would get 35 degrees here. Sine of 17.8 equals cosine of x. Again, this is only true if this angle plus this angle equals 90. And if we did algebra there, we would do 90 minus 17.8 to get 72.2 degrees. Um, now here's where it gets a little bit more complex because now we have variables in both of them. But again, if you understand this relationship, then you're going to be fine. So cos and sine are equal. Remember, this is only true if the reference angles add to 90. They must be complementary, right? So we can take 3x plus 7x, set it equal to 90, and find the value of x that would make that true. The value of x that would make that true, if you did algebra, you're going to get that x equals 9. And I shouldn't be saying degrees. I should just be using the numbers here. So x equals 9. Now, last but not least, again, we have sine and cosine equal. So I know that my two reference angles, what's inside of the parentheses, must add to 90. So we have 2x minus 10 plus x minus 20 equals 90. Now, if you do algebra and solve for that, I believe you get 40, but I just did that in my head. Hopefully that's right. You can double check me. Um, but yeah, this is the property. You want to make sure that you're adding those angles up and setting them equal to 90 in order to solve for the missing piece.